in glycolysis, what will happen is the glucose will get broken down into eventually two uh, molecules of pyruvate. But I want to point out something really quick. First of all, uh, in this, in, in order to get from glucose to pyruvate, you have to have NAD+. Yeah, in fact, you have to have two molecules of NAD+, to form the two molecules of pyruvate from one glucose. Whenever you go through this cycle, you actually, uh, you, so you lose two molecules of NAD, and you create two mo molecules of NADH. For anyone who's interested, NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So something interesting occurs actually because usually the NAD get donates electrons to oxygen and uh, the oxygen takes on um, basically four hydrogens and you get two molecules of H2O. But during intense exercise, so if, if you're working out a lot, the amount of O2 you get falls down. If the amount of O2 falls down, then all of a sudden all this NADH that you're creating has nothing to donate electrons to and it, whenever it, so when it donate, whenever it gives away its electrons, it's converted back into NAD. And you need that NAD in order to run more glycolysis. But whenever there's no oxygen to donate the electrons to, all of a sudden you can't, uh, you can't reconvert NAD, so you can't uh, go back into glycolysis through that pathway. Whenever this happens, what your body does is it will take the pyruvate, and it will, through an enzyme called lactate dehydrogenase, it will take an NADH, and it will convert it into NAD, and it will turn the pyruvate into lactate. So you get lactate and NAD, NAD+. And then with that newly generated NAD, so you got newly generated NAD+, you can go back through glycolysis again, therefore continually creating your two extra molecules of ATP. So that's what happens when you have something called oxygen debt. So oxygen debt Oxygen debt sends, uh, diverts from the, uh, the tricarboxylic acid cycle, the otherwise known as the Krebs cycle. It convert, it, it transfers or it it diverts pyruvate from going through the TCA, the Krebs cycle, and it sends it to the lactic acid pathway. Now, you can actually convert lactic acid back into pyruvate. So pyruvate, but that requires taking an NAD and converting it into NADH. But when there's no oxygen around, you don't want to use up all your NAD to make NAD. You don't want NADH when there's no oxygen around. You want NAD so that you can keep going through the Krebs cycle. So what your muscles will do is they will export that lactate to the liver. And the liver will use energy that it gets from the breakdown of fatty acids to create glucose out of lactate and then it sends the glucose back to the muscles. So the process of creating glucose from smaller molecules is gluconeogenesis. Gluconeogenesis. I'm not going to write out all of genesis because I run out of space but you get the point. And then this whole cycle we're breaking down glucose to lactate and sending it to the liver building it back up to glucose and sending it back to the muscles. That's called the Cori cycle. An interesting little bit of uh, information is that red blood cells, I'm going to move some of this, squeeze it down, red blood cells will actually only use the, uh, the uh, lactate fermentation. So they, they make all of their energy from lactate fermentation. That's the lactate pathway. And the reason they do that is because red blood cells carry oxygen to, the, to all the other uh, tissue in the body. So what would happen if they were using the Krebs cycle? Well, they would be, if they were using the Krebs cycle, they would be using all of that oxygen, and they would deliver less oxygen to the tissues. So 
The red blood cells don't use any oxygen in their uh, energy metabolism. They only use the lactate fermentation pathway, and then they export all of their lactate to the liver. Now the muscles, the difference is the muscles, um, they can either export the lactate to the liver in the Cori cycle, or if they um, repay their oxygen debt, they can convert lactate back into pyruvate and NADH.